Hello everybody, Ian Lee here. Hope y'all are well today. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about letting the melody be your guide and creating lines uh, as we practice. And we practice the putting the things that we've been working on into our solos, into the things we want to see come out of our playing more. Um, letting the melody be your guide is a phrase I'm sure you've all heard before. If you haven't, Yet, you will hear it many more times in your life, and it's a, it's, a great, it's a great reference for if you're ever in the middle of improvising and you feel stuck or out of ideas or you start to clam up, you can always play the melody, you can always dance around the melody, you can always play it in so many wonderful ways. And really, what do we love about these tunes? I mean, there's, these, there's the melody and there's the way the harmony functions with that. And it's those movements that I think we get caught in our ears. And then we can use those things to jump off and create, right? So I want to take all of me in the key of C. And we'll just start with just that first part of the melody. And it goes... C, G, E, right? Now, I want to use some Barry Harris concepts here because I love the way that he thinks and uh, tells us to practice and the things that he likes to um, prescribe so we can do line creation. Now, we're gonna keep that part of the melody straight. And we're actually gonna use that note, E, as our jumping off point to then create a solo, or at least part of a solo. So, one of the first things I think about is, at least in this moment, is let's come up a four note chord. Why not? We're landing on E, and we just came down. Let's go up. So what I did is I came up in E minor 7, which is the four-note chord you find on the third scale degree of C major, which is E. So you E minor 7. Pretty. So let's play it in context. Comes out of tune there. That's really pretty stuff already. So I could... Lots of ways you can jump off. Just from a little idea. See, it doesn't take much. So you could even create something as simple as that and use that as your jumping off point for the solo. Um, but let's keep going with creating a line that we're gonna specifically use, at least while we're practicing. Now, what we could do next, at least what's coming to mind next, is I have this, these two notes here at the end of that chord. That's a B and a D. And if you notice, we have space in between those two notes. So we can always fill in the gap between two notes with chromatic movement. So in that case, I'd put a C and a C sharp in there. So let's hear how that sounds. And that rhythm just felt natural to me. You could, you could phrase it any way you want. I mean, there's, again, this is another aspect of this. You could phrase any of this stuff any way you want. So you can go... Right? Lots of ways to play through these things rhythmically, too. So don't forget that. You can come up with one phrase and change the rhythm of it and the way that it's vocalized. You know, almost an infinite number of possibilities there. So, you know, drill deep into what you're working on. Anyways, that's a side note. So let's keep up with this chromatic theme, filling in the gap between B and D. But let's use Barry Harris's chromatic scale here. Now, what is his scale if you don't know versus a regular chromatic scale? Regular chromatic scale, we're just filling in all the notes, right? Just C to C, we play all the notes available in our 12-tone system of Western music. 
Barry's idea is that when there is not a half step in between two notes, for example, E to F, you put in a scale tone above. So we go to fill in the gap, as it were, if that makes sense. So I'll, I'll play it and I think it'll make more sense. So we have that C, C sharp, D, and then D to E, there's a half step. Cool. Now between E and F, there's no half step. So what do we do? We go up to the next scale degree. So all together that sounds. Isn't that cool? So what if we use that on filling in the space on this little line that I've created so far? So we have. So if I were to take that as in, okay, well actually I'm trying to do chromatics in terms of this particular exercise and I have no half steps between B and C. So I'd have to go up to D between the B and the C. So we get a whole nother set of motion going on here. It's really cool stuff. So I'll play it very straight initially and kind of slower. Isn't that cool? That's really, I mean, it's pretty. And I love the way that it flows. It kind of goes up and back and down. It's just really, and look at this. We're getting all this cool stuff all within the space of, if you think of like E as our octave boundary right now, all within one octave. I mean, that's so cool. And I really, really love that about um, doing this kind of exploration because if, if you even look at like a few Charlie Parker transcriptions, just look at the transcriptions, the written solos. And you notice that at least, um, I know for me as a violin player, the way it's written out in treble clef, he doesn't ever really go much below our low G. And maybe that B right there. So that's what, an octave and a major third? I mean, that's not a lot uh, in terms of the amount of space that he uses, but how he uses it is smart. It's intelligent, it's pretty. So I think that's another thing that I like to think about when I'm trying to come up with phrases and ideas and not going like, how do I, you know, get all over the dang neck, you know, but how do I, how do I come up with stuff that flows and moves all in this, you know, there's so much to do in just a tiny amount of space. It's how, how smart you are with it. It's really cool. So let's, let's play through that again. So we have, again, I could phrase it differently. I don't really like that, but that's what I did. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, sorry. You know, I don't really like those two rhythms per se, but I'm sure I could come up with something cool if I took a little more time to do it. So I'm gonna cut this video at this point. I just wanted to give you all some, just some, you know, just some inspiration. And I hope you can uh, work with this idea on some level uh, in creating your own ideas and, and your own solos and your own whatever your own your own practice book is what it comes down to create your own practice book all right have fun and uh, happy practicing <laughs>